Coming up, we're at the Polka Dot Cafe. We see some enormous muffler men and we visit the best veteran museum we've ever seen. Before we get stumbled by President Biden to Chicago today. This is absolutely brilliant. There's a big massive Donald Trump on the wall as well. Ooh, these ice cream cone chairs. Oh, there's one of these funny mirrors, Gary. Oh, let's see what I look like in it. Oh. You train. The Route 66 is running alongside of the uh, main highway. Um, they've got one of these Burger Boy things. There's quite a few of these around America we've seen now. But look at this. They've got the chipmunks, Gary. I know. <laughs> There's a great big massive guy here as well next to the ice cream parlour. And then as you go along, there's a massive Donald Trump. This is definitely worth stopping at. There's loads of like memorabilia and so you've got bits and pieces here but this is an old antiques place as well all sorts of brilliant stuff in here and then you've got a sort of route 66 memorabilia in there oh i'm gonna have to do a bit of shopping now henry's rabbit ranch and this is henry hi henry there are some bunnies over there oh there's apparently some bunnies over here so you've got seven did you say yeah seven bunnies and how long have they been here uh I've been here for 29 years. Wow. Inside yeah. the shop, look, here's the latest bunny edition. Hello, darling. Um, so this is the shop. Look, week, so it's a Christmas bunny. We so we're learning that the Spanish are the people that come here the most often. Things yeah. we love about America is there's always the world's largest something or other. And here we are at the world's largest wagon. And we're in Lincoln. Here it is from the front. You can see how massive it is. Because Gary looks like a little dot in comparison. It's absolutely brilliant. I think, does it say anything? Is there a plaque? There's not a plaque, is there? Oh, there's a plaque over there. Interesting facts. This was voted number one attraction in of Regis Digest, wasn't it, Gary? And uh, it's it's got the Guinness World Record for being the biggest covered wagon in the world. There you go. Find out who built it. Yeah, so it was a guy called David Bentley. He built this in 2001 whilst right. he was recovering from a heart disease. Really? <laughs> he was recovering from a heart disease and yeah. he built it. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. How old was he? Um, it doesn't say. Oh. But after he built it, it was then bought by a philanthropist, Larry Biver. Right. Who then brought it here. It doesn't say where it was, though. Oh, oh, I no, wonder. Yeah, it was it was on Route 66 in Divanon. Divanon doesn't say what state that was in, but presumably it's here. And then it was moved here in 2009. Nice. So it's uh, just about five o'clock here, and we're in Atlanta, and we've just come up to the the Bunyan guy. What's he called? <laughs> Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan, the hot dog guy. And also, Atlanta has. The smiley face water tower. Mm -hmm. How happy does he look? <laughs> I mind you, I'm always happy when I've got a lot of drink in me. <laughs> so we're driving along, heading towards Pontiac, and we keep seeing these red flashing lights everywhere. We've no idea what it is. Does anyone know what it is? We don't know. And it's on both sides, it just keeps flashing up. I said to Gary, I think it's Christmas decorations. He said, they're rubbish decorations if they are. But I don't think they're Christmas decorations. And we don't think it's an airfield. I think it's, I think it's electric cables on pylons. It's the only thing I can think of that's that big. It's, so, it's been miles though, hasn't it? It goes for miles. This is a very exciting day. We're on the very last day that we're going to be doing Route 66. We actually stayed overnight in Pontiac last night. And uh, we stayed at the, is it the Welcome Centre? Yeah, the Visitor Centre. Yeah, it's sort of past part of the Harvest House. Talk about a good night's sleep. Oh, it was well. really quiet. It's a really lovely place. You can walk to restaurants. We went to this lovely restaurant called... Um, Dave's. Dave. David's. David's. It was lovely. Gary had the best ribs we've had oh, since we got here. Amazing. Was, oh. if, if you go there, you've got to have the ribs. Well, I had meatloaf, so I was a bit jealous. So <laughs> made him share. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a quick look at the gift shops and stuff here. And then we're going to head on our way. We've got uh, one more muffler man to see. We have. And then we can hit Chicago. So when you come over the road to the visitor centre, 
There's all sorts of bits and pieces. It's amazing. So as you come in, it's absolutely incredible. And what they've got is they've got some exhibits that will take you right from the early days of the start of Route 66. So all of these glass case exhibits will take you through each town as you would go through it. So you've got Wilmington, Joliet. Um, it, and this is just Illinois. But everything in it is related to those towns on Route 66. It's absolutely incredible. And there's floors of this stuff here. Up to the third floor of this building, there's all these mannequins with various uniforms. This is incredible, isn't it, Gary? It is, isn't it? Wow. And they've got, they are all, all individual people as well. So they're, they're actually their uniform. And their medals. And their medals. That's re that's incredible. I've never seen anything like this, have you? No, I've not. God. They're from all three services as well, aren't they? Look at this. This is really amazing. This is really amazing. This is incredible. I've never seen anything like this. This is brilliant. Now, we're really fortunate because the founder of the museum, his son, is actually here. So tell us a little bit about your dad. He's the founder, isn't he? And this, yes. is, this is a replica of your dad, isn't it, in his uniform? That's right. My father was born in St. Louis, married to my mom when he was drafted into World War II in the Army. My father landed the second wave on Omaha Beach and uh, went on throughout Europe uh, to the Battle of the Bulge where he was wounded. And uh, he ended up in Czechoslovakia running a displaced persons camp. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they took very good, good care of them. But at the end of the war, the Russians took it over and made it a prison camp. Yeah. Uh, my dad was a very honorable man. Yeah who saw a lot and shared with our family. Mm -hmm. That's unusual. Most World War II vets don't talk about it. No. But my dad did, and we were blessed because of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's uh, he was a half-track driver all the way through the war, and uh, he took that flag back from Omaha Beach mm -hmm. uh, and the bunker, and we brought it back, and they gave us that beautiful banner. The reason I like it, too, is that in the morning, like early morning, the sun hits it from behind and it glows. It's wow. It's like golden. <laughs> and this was given to you by the French Museum, wasn't it? They That's They right. gave you it. So right. tell us a little bit about where your dad landed on in the D-Day. So he landed, landed on Omaha Beach, on the Beach, worst spot it? Uh, on Easy Red Sector mm -hmm. of Omaha Beach. Wow. Uh, and... Uh, he struggled uh, to get up to the bluffs uh, at the end of the day mm -hmm. and lost many friends. Oh. Uh, this man is my second hero because Malin Tressler of Pennsylvania saved my life before I was born. Did he? That is, he killed a German sniper about ready to kill my dad in an apple orchard above Omaha Beach. Wow. And uh, years later, my dad and I drove to Pennsylvania. They hadn't seen one another in 50 years. Mm -hmm. And it's if, as if they were young men again when they started talking, like they were 24 years old again. And uh, that's something that I'll always remember. How old was your dad when he wanted to start the museum? Uh, he was 77. 77 he was, yeah. The tenacity of the guy to be able to get the museum going. And the, you would not believe how brilliant. Every single uniform has pictures and medals. And it has a story behind it. These, are, these people are, have been kept alive. And we even and that's have the voices. Point. They even have voices. There, there are 20 uniforms that have a green dot. That means oh. you can hear the veteran. Oh, like my, my gosh, yeah. About so you'll see this has got a little green dot on it where where the write-up is. And that's you can listen to it. And I take it you scan the barcode. I want you to do that later on, and you can hear his story. 
Oh, that's incredible. We've absolutely loved this museum, haven't we, Gary? Because it's great, isn't it? And there's a, a lovely 1940s display. There's some steps down to it over here as well. But I feel quite emotional after seeing that museum. They've got 280 of those mannequins and they've got their names on, their pictures, the details. Yeah, their un it's their uniform with their medals on it that have been donated by family members or themselves. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's honestly, you can't miss this. If you're coming through Pontiac, this is the best museum we've seen for veterans ever, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, ever. Absolutely. Second floor, you've got the amazing Marilyn Monroe sculptures. There's all sorts of headlines of World War II here. There's a, a canteen and a music stage area in there. There's all different things, but there is also a 1940s house set up. Th this, this has blown us away. We really wish we had more time. This is definitely one of my favourite museums on the, you know, the whole route. Isn't it yours, Gary? Yeah, it is, definitely. Look at these amazing murals in Pontiac as well. That's a mural. It looks like a shop, doesn't it? If you follow the, um, did you say the red steps will take you to the museum? And the blue steps will take you to the mural, like, or the other way round. There's murals all around Pontiac. Look at these. It's incredible. And they've got a massive, giant Pontiac, Illinois, Route 66, right behind the museum on the wall. Come to the polka dot drive-in. You've got Elvis, Superman, and then there's malts and hot dogs and stuff. So we'll see what the food's like, but isn't it brilliant? Here? It's really retro. We've got the older. Route 66 on the floor. We've got juice boxes and look how they've designed it with the records around there. Nice little tables, lovely little booths. How much do you weigh? Oh god, I'm not getting on that. Flipping hell. <laughs> A few months later. <laughs> See what I look like in the funny mirror. Didn't look any different. Brilliant diner. The food was really good as well, and it wasn't expensive. Got a new member of the Blues Brothers here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just about to see our last muffler man. And this is probably the one of the most iconic sights that you think about on Route 66. It's the uh, Alien Man, isn't it? No, the Gemini Man. This, it's the Gemini Man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the Gemini Man. He's absolutely enormous, as are all of these muffler men. There he is in comparison to the motorhome, which looks tiny next to it. Farewell, Gemini man. Keep on rocking. It's coming into Chicago on the 66, which is now the 55. On the last leg of our journey, and this is what the traffic is like. We've got 14 miles, 15 miles to get to destination. And it is, uh, it's quarter to four. So we want to make make it before it gets dark. And then we've got to turn around and we've got to get to Gary. <laughs> what time is it now, babe? It's now quarter past four. It's quarter past four. And we've still got, we've only got 14 miles to go. But I've just realised as I'm like looking at Chicago traffic because it's really, really, really slow. President Biden's in Chicago today. <laughs> so there's a load of motorcades, like his motorcade is like blocking loads of stuff. There's so we might have to go and head out today and then head back in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, oh, we've got, we got I can't 14 believe miles this. to go, and I think the last 14 miles has taken us well over an hour. It'll be dark by the time we get there if we carry on like this, so it's not working. It's just not worth it. I think we go out and then come back in tomorrow. Oh my gosh. We've got to get the sign. Why didn't we check? Why didn't we check it? <laughs> Is anything happening, you know, on the 9th of November in Chicago? <laughs> oh my gosh, right. Let me have a look at, we're going to have to look at Google Maps. Morning. Oh. So it's Friday the 10th of November, isn't it? Yep. And uh, we're going to attempt to hit the end of Route 66 again today. So last night we got turned around because Joe Biden was in town. God, that guy's just spoiled all our plans, didn't he? <laughs> he did. Because his um, cavalcade, or whatever you want to call it, his motorcade, was uh, sort of blocking off half of Chicago, we couldn't get in. So we stayed last night in a place called Gary. So Gary's in Gary. 
and uh, we can't give you the location it's Harvest Host place that we stayed at and was really comfortable though and we had a great night's sleep and we're gonna now head in we've got about 30 miles to do we are determined to video the very start sign of Route 66 which is the end for us so let's hope we make it there this time intact so we're about seven miles off from destination the Chicago skylines in the distance but I was really shocked there's a there's a train that runs in the center so you, you're you're on the sort of train tracks here right in the center of the highway it's quite amazing there's a train station right in the middle of the motorway it's really strange there you go there's the train in the center we're about two miles off and here's the Chicago skyline from here and Lake Michigan is literally to the right hand side of us. We might be able to get a glimpse of it, oh, it's really bumpy. That's Soldier Field there. There's Lake Michigan just as we're about to drive around. It's a gorgeous day, it's a bit chilly but it's really beautiful. You're nearly there. Almost there, seven weeks. <laughs> seven weeks and it's half a mile till we get there. And we're just hoping we're going to be able to video going past it because I don't think we're going to be able to get out. It's uh, it's busy but it's not as busy as it was yesterday so at least, at least we're here. here. Yes. Almost there. It's uh, 700 feet away by all accounts. Now this, we understand that there's two start signs. One's full of stickers, so you can barely read it, and one is still okay. Um, we're hoping the sat nav's taken us to the one that's okay, because the one full of stickers, you can't see anything. Um, but we've got to finish this, haven't we, Gary? We have. This is we're uh, almost there. So you guys can look out for it as much as we are, as we're coming round here. We're looking for... It's it is literally this where road are here we? where that silver car is. Where the silver car is? Yeah. Oh, so right, it's, okay. It's left hand turn, and it should be on the right hand side as we turn left. Okay. 400 feet, turn left. Oh, I can see it. Gary, I can see it. <laughs> oh my gosh, there it is. <laughs> Begin. Oh, sorry. Oh, shit. Oh, well, well at least we're. At least we're uh, perfect. <laughs> I'm just going to take a picture. We did it! Yay. We're just leaving Chicago now, but we finished it, Route 66, all the way from LA to Chicago. Now we know it usually goes Chicago to LA, so we're ecstatic to have completed it anyway. Almost two and a half thousand miles of a road trip. We can't believe it, can we, babe? No, we can't. But an oh, incredible journey. Thanks for joining us on this brilliant two and a half thousand mile journey. We've seen some amazing sights. <laughs> Nuts now. Poor old Gary's not looking so uh, confident anymore.